Then, yeah. Um, hi, everyone. This is the Cuba Community Meeting. Uh, it's the 30th of March, 2022. Um, first point is in general introduction. So uh, anyone who wants to introduce himself to the Cuba community does now have the opportunity to do this. So do we have anyone who is new and would like to introduce himself? Okay, so I think that means no. Um, so then next point would be the agenda notes, which are quite empty. So I think, I guess that, um, are there any things that someone would like to add on short notice now, or should we just go to the open floor? Okay, I think then the latter is the case. Open floor is also um, empty. So yeah, I'd like to ask for someone maybe to bring something up if you want. Okay, so I think there is nothing to discuss then. Okay, so then I see that there is a pull request that needs attention. Um, so I'm going to open that real quick and see and give the word to Antonio. Hey. Hi, hi guys. Um, so yeah, I wanted to you know discuss a bit about this because I opened this I think last week or maybe before I don't remember. But um, basically, this came out from um, some uh, attempts with uh, uh, SNO in OpenShift. Um, not that, that it, it's important, but basically. Uh, I noticed that the workload updater doesn't actually check for the live migration feature gate before migrating any VMs. So while adding the check, the uh, discussion came out. So if you, Daniel, you can scroll down. This yeah. Only or, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So Lubo uh, argued um, that we should fire an alert when a misconfiguration comes up. And here the misconfiguration would be that uh, you have a uh, live migration as a workload update method, but you don't have the feature gate enabled, uh, which can easily happen because we don't have a validating webhook um, that checks the kubectl at creation. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, the discussion, there was like a small discussion whether we should fire this alert, when it should be fired, and if it should be like, um, you know, rate limited in some way. Uh, right now, like what's in the PR, uh, whenever uh, an update to the kubectl would happen, um, an alert would probably fire, would probably be fired if there is a misconfiguration. Uh, that won't happen. I mean, th this, that's the only case when it would happen. It won't happen every time you would try to migrate a VM uh, if you don't have the feature gate enabled. So yeah, I mean, does anyone have any strong opinion or just any opinion on this? Uh, I do have like, um, I don't know. Uh point to make about this like as far as I understand like the events are uh, automatically cleaned up after an hour so if this is just like at ed at editing time like it'll probably disappear from the event list and uh, the, the, the relevant information will be gone unless you have some sort of a let's say a third-party service like uh, where you're sending the events to which probably I guess it's what people use 
But nevertheless, my point is, wouldn't it make more sense to have like on the migration, uh, I don't remember the name of the entities of the CRD, to put like a status condition on, on the migration things, saying this, like this cannot be done because uh, feature gate is not enabled? I think that, that happens already. I think I'm not 100% okay. sure about it, but this is like, uh, this is a little bit different because the workload updater uh, tries to migrate to like outdated Vert launcher uh, when you upgrade QVert. Uh, so, I mean, it's not so rare event, but it's also kind of a rare event. Um, and it's a little bit like detached from the VM or VMI itself, because it's a rather like a cluster configuration rather than, uh, you know, the VM. Because I mean, a VM can be live migratable, uh, but you, and you can have the feature gate turned off and that's still valid, right? Because maybe you don't want them to be migrated. I see, uh, but yeah, my point is only that like the events will be automatically cleaned up. So I'm not sure if uh, unless people are using something else to put the events on, uh, this information will disappear. So I'm not quite sure how useful it is. Like my point is basically that the events do not live forever. Okay. Well, actually I didn't know that to be honest, because um, that's usually, I mean, uh, Looking at the code, that's usually what we do, uh, firing an event when we detect some kind of like warning in this case, it's not like a straight up error. Uh, but I, I guess your suggestion is uh, maybe maybe putting like a condition on the Qver CR that would probably go more in the way of what you're suggesting. I am not sure, like I'm actually not suggesting anything. I'm just saying that uh, like, if this is something that happens like uh, very seldom, well, yeah, the, the I mean, event will live very shortly. So probably when you will and check what happened, the event will already be gone. And uh, like what you're attempting to do will, well, not happen or it will happen for a very short, uh, for a very brief period of time. So I'm just pointing that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, no, that's, that's so, an interesting point. So ju just to, I think it, what you just said before, if this is, you have a desired state and you cannot, it's not applicable, right? It's wrong. So you need to represent it in, in the actual state, the status part, and say it's migration is not applicable. Like, and then, then it's clear, right? Yeah, I think so. But I honestly uh, am, but this is for the VMs. It's not for like, uh, for let's say pieces of the cluster, like uh, you're upgrading the launchers or something like that. Th these are for users VMs, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, the workflow yeah. updater, basically what it does, it's uh, yeah, migrating the, the VM in order to update the, you know, the, the underlying word launcher. So I guess so. I think uh, Eddie uh, abstracted really well what's happening. And I think like uh, a status condition for this, I mean, honestly, it seems like the correct place to have it. Okay. But as you so said, you probably we're in... already, probably we already do it, <laughs> which means that uh, if we already do it, no, there's nothing to be done. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I'll check that because I, I think I saw it, but like I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. But yeah, okay, I'll, I'll check that. That's a good suggestion. Okay, then. Um, if that's uh, so concluded, then um, I don't see any else, any other pull requests that need attention here. So. Let's have a quick look at the mailing list review, whether we probably skip some stuff that might not be handled somehow. We have here the design proposal for the memory dump, but I think this is already eight days ago. So I think the only thing 
Um, yeah, I think there is nothing to do here. So um, let's move on to the next one. So I'm not exactly sure if we had a box crop last week, but I am going to quickly look at those. So let's see if we have something here. By the way, everyone can see my screen okay? Yep. Okay, great. So just uh, for confirmation, I'm not sure because I don't really get some validation whether it shows okay or not. Okay, so, um, okay, this one is an enhancement proposal. I think that is by Boris. I guess that is a tracker. So track of RM issues. Database source, sorry, that's quick source, interesting. Mm, okay. Okay, we got the GF armor core for the source, okay. And with the GF source. Mm, okay, so. What do you think? This sounds like we can accept it, right? Yeah, I can I can confirm that that um, is the experience on Ethan two as well. Okay, so yeah, I, I think that we can just um, accept this and then uh, find someone who wants to work on it. So let's see, um, maybe. I'm not sure if, um, if we can just tag him probably. Um, I'm just asking him probably, maybe he's interested in working on this, so. Okay, so next one. Let's see. By the way, Catherine, would you probably be interested in also working on that? Or um, because I think if, if it uh, hurt you also, then you might also be interested to um, improve the experience for other people. I'm not sure. Perhaps, but I would be a couple months away from being able to. Ah, okay. Yeah. Look, um, yeah, if you, I, I'm just going to, to put the issue link into the chat if anyone is interested to in looking into that. So, sorry, that was the wrong one. So this one, then, um, then you can, might be able to take a look on that. Okay, so next one. Okay, this one looks, looks like it's, there's already enough traffic and it's already kind of bugged. So I think it should be handled. Just taking a quick look on that. Okay, finally already answered. Okay. So next one is this one. More information about the dependency package container C Linux in the documentation. Um okay. Why is this there? It's such a rocky Linux. Uh, I remember something about Rocky Linux, but I can't recall the exact details on that. I think we had that already. Yeah. I think that they are correct in presuming that it's a limitation of the K0s documentation, but at the same time, it depends on what runtime they're using. Because if they're using Cryo, oh, wait. Cryo or container D is wrapped in K0, isn't it? I think that the, that's actually a K0 spot. Hmm. Could be wrong with that. Hi, everyone. Um, I mean, this is more of the issue of the host operating system. Um, I think what we are missing is the mention or in our doc that uh, some packages are needed in order to properly work with some settings. Uh, and it's similar to the up armor, up armor issue. So um, 
I think uh, can can I just just tag you on that, Lubo, um, or um, should should I add something on that? I can just also do that. So, but so you're saying this is uh, just is just correct. So, um, because we are not exactly saying that we are uh, not directly supporting Rocky Linux, for example, because there are packages missing, right? And maybe I think this the open thing there would be to uh, open up a section in the user guide probably where we would advise what packages are exactly missing or wouldn't that help somehow? If we're trying to address a wider variety of possible common imp um, implementation challenges, we might do a documentation section specific to like common caveats or something. I need to find documentation that says that more eloquently but and, and emulate that but that would make sense. I guess we can also suggest uh, installing this uh, um, and this policy that we have um, already compiled just manually. And then this will oh, not okay. happen. Um, Vladi, do you, have a, do you have a link for me what I can just put in there? So uh, where, where we uh, describe how that is installed manually somehow, uh, to be honest. Yeah. No, unfortunately not. But I, I think, yeah, documentation is, uh, is something that we need to, yeah, yeah. some kind of a small write-up. OK. Um, do, would you be wanting to tackle that somehow? Or um, um, I guess? I'll try, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to check you on this um, so that you know where we need to look. So um, thanks. Thank you for that. Okay, so let's see. Projects, definition. So this one would be a new IRT. Oh, I think that didn't we have that already? I think that is. Uh, we, Uh -huh, seek network. Isn't that isn't that the default behavior? I I just don't get what he's wanting. So he would like to have the same IP in the VMI. What is the uh, interface type on on this bug report? Does he say? Like if it's good question. I'm having a little bit. I'm a bit confused. This a... sound, looks like Chinese. No. Ah, okay, so he's saying IPv4 That's address weird. is this one, and this is an IP6, IPv6 address, right? Oh, no, this is... No, a that's a Mac. Nonsense. Yeah. Cool. Ah, yeah, so this one is the IP address that is... Like, the, the matter says match. Sorry, did you hey. get that? Uh, my my connection is really bad at the moment, but uh, the MAC address is matched. But apparently, I am I'm, I'm honestly, the big thing is I have no clue what the the screenshot actually represents. Where did this come from, and what are we saying this IPv4 uh, cider actually is? I don't know what it says. So, I guess that he expects this to match with the info below, but. I cannot say that it should match because I don't know what the above one actually is. And that and we would need to know uh, exactly what the IP no, address oh. shows inside the host itself, and the guest. Right. So, so one second. The, the if you read the the screenshot with the, the YAML, so that says that the, the IP address was detected on the pod of the virt launcher, more or less. And what he sh you see here is, I'm guessing it's what he sees in the in the guest itself. This is what he, so he says it's not the same. That's, yeah, and, that's and, his and claim. Now the question is, 
No, it's not not depends. It depends on the it depends uh, what binding is he using. So he's using bridge. Using masquerade or bridge or, or okay. Right? He's using bridge. Ah. But if if he uses bridge, then this should have been correct. Yes, it should match, but like I don't know what the thing above is. Like uh, you, you're saying this. Like you, you're assuming this is the the guest info. Yes, I think this uh, is what he honest... writes. He writes the. He says this is the guest, IP guest OS. Well, one is the yeah, one is well, the... well guest, but uh, that looks like a Windows screenshot uh, of the like the main interface. So. Okay, so let's let's have a quick look at the uh, virtual machine instance um, YAML probably. So what we can at least deduce from that is that he uh, network is not where, where is it? Yeah, you, you can see that's the uh, guest main interface from the YAML as well from the VM definition because he says that he wants a an Intel E thousand, and I think I read that in the screenshot as well. So. Hmm. So I think the interface is Microsoft IP address. Yeah, that's exactly the same here, right? But I don't see where, where the network configuration is. Okay, so I think that we shouldn't um, follow up to too much with that. So maybe we could just um, triage needs more information um, and ask for um, what, uh, can you elaborate a little bit on uh, what you're expecting? Because this is not completely clear. A little bit more. Uh, Daniel? Yes, of course. Uh, also ask for the configuration for the uh, cluster default network. Because we need to figure out if that is using IPAM or not. Oh, sorry, I didn't get that completely. Can you repeat that? Sorry. The cluster default network configuration. Default network configuration is important, right? Yes. Thank you. But just if you can, just please um, label it with the SIG network, so we'll find it. I think I think it is there already. So SIG network, it's, it's ah, okay. already there. Yes, 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 thank you. I think where this, uh, okay, I see especially not the screenshot or where the, the screenshot originated from. Okay, I hope. Hope that makes it a little bit more clear. So I'm going to add this. Okay, uh, like I said, um, Eddie, did, was that a, would you want to look at that also or should I tag you on the issue or um, should we just wait until he gives us more information? I, will, I guess I or Miguel will look at it later. Okay. Yeah, so, for yeah, now, I, let's... I will help. Let's wait for his reply. Without the cluster default net configuration, there's nothing we can do. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Okay, then. So let's see. But Miguel, just one note is uh, I don't, I don't, I mean, if he's using the bridge binding, then it, whatever IP was set there, it should be passed to the guest. Yeah, but I don't know how I mean, he's trying what? to. I don't know how he's putting an, an IP or not in the in the pod interface. So I just want to look at that. Hmm. So maybe yeah. this should or could also be something what we could probably add on the uh, on the issue, right? That would help also. No, with like with that we can we can see it because I mean if ah. the pod interface does not have an IP, I have no clue how this could happen. Uh, well, hmm. we wouldn't try to. Pass it along to the guest. 
but I guess that breaks like Kubernetes. I don't know. Let's see what he says. Okay. one is from R. I guess we don't need to look at that. So next one is by Lubo. This one failed to hot plug as a video by interface is okay. Okay, oh yeah, OR is already looking. Let's enter in context, okay. Um, triage needs information. Just adding the label so that we have it next time. Um, okay, this one is then the second latest. Okay, this one is then the Austin virtual machine instance that has failed. And let's have a quick look at that. Oh. Hmm. Okay, this is the. Okay, I think we might at least, I can't make anything of that. No. Okay, so let's say we've done a little bit, guide with a bit backtrack. Okay, this is a very old Kubernetes version of 35. Kubernetes version 1.12. Hmm. Okay. So actually, can we just, can we just, um, I wouldn't want to just, uh, just uh, tell him that, that we are uh, probably not supporting this old version, um, but we could at least suggest that he might, might be updating to a new version and see if this still occurs somehow. Or what you what you think? I, I think yeah, but but if one twelve, I think we, he doesn't have any other option, right? So, uh, hi Daniel, can you please ask the person to provide uh, CRD for virtual machine instance? Yeah, that's actually missing here, right? So, yeah. Oh wait a minute, isn't isn't that what we were wanting to look at? Uh, this is CR, so this is custom resource, but we want the definition of the custom resource. Ah, you say, okay. Yeah. So, okay, triage needs information. the chance to upgrade. This one's the last one. Okay, the help user run failed an arm. Okay, there are four comments already. So this looks like it's at least handled. Yeah, this was that. Maya is already looking at that. Okay. Okay, so that's done. Okay, so then I think. We should be good with the bug scrub. Just going to reload, reload the patch to get stuff there. So let me see. Users must, I think, have at least a couple of issues or some labels. Okay, so then let's get back to close this bug scrub. And um, yeah, final call for anyone probably to bring something up before we close the meeting. Oh, I saw that there is another pull request. I think uh, we have time for that probably. So um, maybe we can 
have a quick quick discussion about that if anyone wants to. So who brought this up? Can we can we discuss somehow? Lou, can you hear me fine? Yeah, we can hear you. Great. Okay. Hey. Yeah, this is uh, my PR here. Okay. Uh, so effectively, it's just uh, refactoring some uh, repetitious code in the VMI lifecycle handler. Um, added a couple new methods, but mainly just removals of, uh, of redundant code. Okay. Okay, we have already a discussion going on. So, um, so um, okay, so you're just uh, wanting to bring this into to everyone's attention or do you have a specific question on this, um, how we should proceed or what do you want to ask? I uh, just would like further review and, uh, you know, push it over the hump here. I think it's kind of gone stale the past couple weeks. Okay. So, yeah, I guess that you've noticed probably that we had some stuff in NCI going on and we had a quite a hard time. So maybe, uh, oh yeah, I see for example that, yeah, but the job triggers already look good. So, okay, I think there's everything at least regarding from CI side there. Looks, that looks good. So yeah, anyone else wants to, wants to have a look at that? Besides, I think Eddie already looked at that and um, I also saw Lubo. Any takers here? Okay then, so I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to look at that also probably. So that helps somehow and then to assign myself. Ah, Lugo. Okay. Okay, so let's give this a try. And see what Did you say that I need to do something? What, Eddie? No, no. I was just saying that uh, that you had already a look at that, and um, I wanted to ask for other takers probably that. So that we can bring this PR forward. That was all what I was asking for. Okay. If you if you need my attention again, then just tag me there or something. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, but I just saw that this was uh, already reviewed by you, so so we should be good there. Okay. Um. So okay. Um. Then I think that we don't have anything more if uh, no one else wants to chime in again. And then I can give you a couple of minutes back, which is always great to see. And yeah, I wish you everyone a nice rest of the week and uh, yeah, then we might probably see us next week. Thanks Daniel, bye everyone. Take care everyone, Thanks, bye. see you, bye.